Hey there. In this video we are going to look at converting equations between exponential and logarithmic form in any base and we're going to do that using the concept that log and anti-log functions are inverses of each other. Now expressions like the ones I have here, log of 1000 is 3 or log base 2 of 32 is 5, are said to be in logarithmic form because they have expressions in them that use logarithms in both those cases. And they're equivalent to these other two expressions we have down here, 1000 is 10 to the third, or 32 is 2 to the fifth. But those expressions are said to be in exponential form because they contain expressions that involve exponents. Now what we're looking at here is how can we convert between those two using the idea that logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. Now we've seen already how, say, that key and that key, one undoes the other, and similarly, this key and this key would undo each other. They're inverse operations, so these are inverses of each other, as are these. The reason is because one undoes the other. Now this property of inverses can be used to convert equations between the logarithmic form and exponential form. The way we're going to do that, we'll see in a moment here, is if we have one or the other, we're either going to take the logarithm or anti-logarithm of both sides of the equation, just like you've done before with equations. You've done the same thing to both sides to generate another simpler equation. And we're going to do that in whatever base we happen to be working with. So let's have a look at that right now. So in this first example, we have some things that are in exponential form, and we're going to put them in logarithmic form. So this first one says a million is 10 to the sixth. Now you may be able to write that in logarithmic form just because you can see the numbers and you know the relationship. But what we're looking at here is how we can apply the inverse concept. If we have a million on this side, and we have 10 to the sixth on this side, as you've solved equations in the past, you've looked to undo things. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but think back to when you first worked with, say, an equation like that. You could probably just see, well, x is 3, but using inverse operations, which you have undoubtedly learned to do at some point, you say, if I'm trying to isolate the x and it says x plus 2 on this side, I'm going to do the inverse of this operation, which is this operation, because those two operations cancel each other out, leaving me with just the x there. All right. Now it's the same thing here. We have a statement where we have this, basically we have this anti-logarithm function on this side, and what we can do to get rid of that is we can do the inverse of that. We can do the inverse of this 10 to the power of function, which is the logarithm function. If I was to take the logarithm of both sides of that equation, we have these two things that are operations that cancel each other out, just the same way as these two cancel each other out down here. The logarithm of 10 to the power of 6 is just going to be 6. You've seen that before on a calculator, and we're going to use that principle here. So if we want to write this in logarithmic form, we can do that. Take the logarithm of both sides. If it's in exponential form, we can eliminate this exponential expression by taking the logarithm of both sides, and it's going to look like that. We can do the same thing here. If we want to eliminate this exponential expression, as in take it out of exponential form, we can, I'm just going to rewrite it here so we have a bit of space. This is 1 over 10,000, but if I want to eliminate this exponential, this anti-log function here, I can take the logarithm of both sides. Because if the equation was true before, and I do the same thing to both sides here, I get a new one that has that is also true. And for the same reason, essentially these two things are going to cancel each other out. Log of 10 to the power of something is just that something. That's what we've been looking at all along with logarithms. And on the other side we have log of 1 over 10,000. All right, so that's that same thing in logarithmic form. Over here, c is 10 to the d. If we want to eliminate this anti-log function, or that 10 to the power of, 
take the log base 10, common log of both sides. This is going to cancel out, and you just have d is log of c. Up to this point, we've just been doing that by understanding what a logarithm is, but this property of inverses is helpful a lot of times when you're working with equations. Let's look at a few more here. These are three that are in different bases. The other three we just did were in base 10, but these are in a variety of bases here. This says 5 to the power of 4 is equal to 625. Now, if we want to change this into logarithmic form, we're going to look and say, okay, the exponential expression involved is base 5, so I'm going to take the log base 5 of both sides. If I take the log base 5 of both sides, this is going to cancel out because the log base 5 of 5 to the power of something is just the something. 4 is log base 5 of 625, right? That's what it is in logarithmic form. We've, again, seen this by just interpreting the statement and saying, if 5 to the 4 is 625, then log base 5 of 625 is 4. But this is a way of seeing that using this property of inverses. We have here y equals 17 to the x. We're going to take the log base 17 of both sides, and we're going to say that cancels that out. We just have x equals log base 17 of y logarithmic form. One last one here. p to the w equals n. If we take the log of both sides base p, because that's the base of the exponential that we have, that cancels out, and I just have w as log base p of n. It's just using inverse operations the way you always have before, but it's just a new pair of, of inverse operations to use. Now let's do one more here, going the other way. So in this case, we're going to change these into exponential form. So this first one, log of 1,000 is 3, one we've seen many times before. But if we have this logarithmic expression, we can undo it by doing the inverse of this, taking the logarithm of a number. Namely, we can do the anti-log of both sides. And what that's going to look like is basically saying whatever's on both sides Take 10 and raise it to the power of what's on both sides. Make each side become the exponent on a 10. And then on this side, you have anti-log of log of 1,000. Those two things just cancel out, and you just have 1,000 on this side is 10 to the third. That's an exponential form. The second one here, same thing, except we don't know what that is on the right. A B, if we want to get rid of this logarithm on this side and put it in exponential form, we can do anti-log base 10 again because we're working with common logs here. That cancels out and we just have b on this side and we have 10 to the negative 2 over here which we could we could write as 1 over 100 or 0 0.01 if we want but we're going to just leave it like that. And then the third one, we have log h equals k Cancel out this. This is still just common logarithms, base 10. So we're going to do anti-log base 10. That cancels out. And we just have an h and 10 to the k. Three other ones here. So this first one, let me write it out here again so we can work with it. So since there's a log base 3 involved, we're going to do anti-log base 3 on both sides, which is going to mean just taking what's on both sides and going 3 to the power of that, as in make the thing on each side the exponent on a 3, and then this is going to cancel each other out because you have 3 to the power of log base 3 of 81, which just gives you 81. So we have 81 as 3 to the 4th. Now you might be troubled by the fact that the 4 was big there and it became little here. How did that happen? It's because in both cases you're making this thing the exponent and the way we write exponents is superscript, small numbers. The second one here, we have a y, and we have log base 9 of x on this side. So since we're dealing with log base 9, we're going to do anti-log base 9 on both sides. This cancels out, and we just have an x over there, and we have 9 to the y over here. And the third one, log base k, 
k of t. We have no numbers to work with here, but we can still do this because we have log base k involved. So if we do anti-log base k on both sides, that's going to cancel out. And then we have just a t, and this is k to the power of h. All right, so we have each of those three things in exponential form now. All right, so that's how you can use logs and anti-logs in whatever base you happen to be needing and the concept that those two are inverses to manipulate equations that are in logarithmic form or exponential form to switch between one form and the other. That's it. Mm -hmm.